What's on your shirt? Is it a puppet master? Yeah, it's uh, it's one of my friends' uh, oh, okay. clothing line. I'm just supporting. Okay. Did you see Cam's shirt? Huh? Did you happen to see Cam's shirt? Mm. Instead of I'm back, crossed it out, we back. Oh, I ain't, I ain't see it. Okay. Sorry. What do you think about About what? About we back. We back. We back? I ain't gonna cap. I haven't seen nothing about nothing that y'all talking about. Oh, I mean that's what's up. He's talking about it as a team. He's incorporating everybody. That's cool. I just didn't see it. He said he's gonna give away 50 tickets to people that have either rarely been or never been to a Panthers game in order to kind of bring back the mojo to Bank of America Stadium. Have you felt like you need a little kick, kick in the pants to some of the fans here to kind of pick up that atmosphere here? You said, do I feel like we need a, a kick well, in the what? Well, kick in the pants to the uh, Panthers fans to pick up the atmosphere around here. He says that he's talked to some people and they said the, the pride and, the, and that juice isn't quite here like it used to be. Oh, uh, I mean, I don't know. I, got, I mean, I definitely, I definitely feel like the fans have been great um, since, since I've been here. It's like Since these past couple weeks, I feel like they've been really good. But, um, you know, we can control that, you know what I'm saying? Like flying around on defense, making great plays. That'll, you feel me, like I'll have more, they'll have more juice and more energy in the, in the stands. But as long as we're flying around, winning, uh, making plays, I feel like that's here. I think someone asked somebody yesterday, but uh, has Cam picked out the person on defense who he's mouthing off to, like he used to with TD and those guys? Nah, he ain't pick out, he ain't pick out that person yet, but I feel like it's going to be me. For some reason, <laughs> nah. But honestly, I think honestly, if I really had to be honest, I think he'll go back and forth to DJack because I remember that my uh, my rookie year, he used to talk a lot of junk to DJack, and you know DJack like to talk, so yeah, <laughs> that's a that's a lot of that's a lot of talking. It's practice louder the last couple of days than it has been in the past. Louder? Yeah. What you mean by louder? Is Cam's voice apparent? You know Cam gonna be Cam. I mean, that's just that's who he is. You know what I'm saying? He's always going to bring energy. He's always going to bring juice. That's just who he is. But uh, yeah, he's, he's being himself. I'll tell you that. On the same, and that notion of Cam being Cam, do you notice any differences from your rookie year practicing with him compared to now? Or is this a, a Cam? Any differences? Uh, not really, because my rookie year, I mean, I, of course, I remember him, like, you know, bringing the juice and the energy. But I don't really remember him, you feel what I'm saying? Like, as a rookie, everything is new to me. Yeah, I, I was just out there, you know what I'm saying? So I don't really remember him in depth, but I remember him talking and, and, and being that juice for the offense, though, for sure. Okay, now that you've had time for things to slow down, what is it like being around Cam Newton, the guy who, and I'm sure you were younger, when he was doing this nine years ago, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, was uh, one, of the, one of the most dominant players in the league. What's it like having him now as a teammate now that you have had some years in the league yourself? Uh, yeah, to see it now, uh, he's definitely a natural leader. I can tell you that. Like, uh, even coming back, like, of course, he don't know this group, like, you know what I'm saying, like when he was here. But he's a natural leader. Like it just gravitates towards him and guys gravitate around him because of the energy he brings and the leadership role that he plays. Like it's just it's natural to him. So that's what I noticed. Brian, what are some good things that this Washington football team does that you guys are gonna have to prepare for on defense? Um They got a they got a tough quarterback. They got a tough, tough guy in Heineke. Um he he, he has a lot of confidence. I'll say he has a lot of confidence. He really he really believes like uh, he can win games in this league, which he has proven, you know what I mean? But uh, he's a tough guy. And I feel like him, Mc, McLaren, I don't know how to say his, his, his last name like that, McLaurin, um, and uh, Tufo in the backfield, those are their guys. Those are their guys, and that's who, who really brings the juice to their offense. But it all starts with Heineke, I think, in my opinion. Go back to the question about kind of the lack of the atmosphere here at some earlier games. The idea that Cam's first home game is going to coincide with Ron coming back. <laughs> well, your, your thoughts about that and what the atmosphere might be like. I just think it's wild uh, that, that it, it just so happened to play out that way. That um, they're both coming back to, for, to Bank of America for the first time. I think it's wild, but um, I'll just be trying to preach to the guys because like, I know it's going to be a lot of you know a lot of emotion and everything like that. I just try to preach to the guys like we got to stay focused and and we got to. Be at the, at the end of this, we got to be one to know at the end of this game. So that's my main thing. I don't want them to get too caught up in the moment because the guy's coming back and all that. So, but it is it is crazy that that they're both coming back at the same time. So it is crazy. You think Ron will have a little something for him too? I mean, Ron being the defensive coach. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I can't even tell you. I don't know. Hey Brian, you talked from training camp like how we wanted to build you know a top defense. 
you know, this season. And obviously you guys are very confident, but I'm wondering, when you go to Arizona and beat a team with the record that they had, does that reinforce or do anything for you guys as a, as a whole? Does it tell you guys anything? Uh, I mean, it's great, uh, the performance that we put on as a defense. It's great that, um, that we did that in the desert against uh, like a top-notch offense, you feel what I'm saying? But at the same time, we, 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 we look at the things and we praise the things that we do well, but we also have to critique the things that could have been. So, you know, on certain plays, like there's a guy can make an outstanding play, but in the back end, there may be a, a mess up or a mistake. And that's what we got to fix, because if that guy doesn't make that play, that's something that's open. So we always have to, no matter how well we play, we always, we always have to go back and critique ourselves, just be hard on ourselves so we don't get complacent, basically. That what makes the defense great because you, you don't get complacent. You, you still you keep trying to find little things to work on to fine tune. So that's that's the main thing we got to do. Brian, Phil said this morning earlier. He said that he had challenged you guys to play faster. What what does that look like? What does that entail? What does that intake? Yeah. What, what do you does mean? that look like? To play faster. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> to play faster. I I don't know. I, I really. When Phil says he wants you to play faster. What specifically is he looking for? I mean, I think he's just looking for guys to fly around the ball. Like, um, like I, I think he looks he looks for as many guys as he can to be in that picture and around the ball as possible. If you if you get what I'm saying, so like, just like it's it's intimidating for a defense or for you have seven six to seven guys around the ball at all times. That's intimidating to an offense. So that's probably what he mean by uh, playing fast. He wants us to fly around at a faster rate. I mean, I feel like we've been doing that, but it's always it's always room for improvement. I know it took all to go one and zero. Every week, I get that. But you have the bye week coming up here in a little bit. You're in the playoff race right now. Is it tough to not look ahead? Have you looked ahead to kind of see who you got next week, what other teams are doing? You got the Falcons playing tonight on Thursday Night Football? Uh, I wouldn't say it's tough not to look ahead. But um, I mean, when you hit that halfway mark around that, that week nine, week eight, whatever, um, that game, that's like the halfway mark of the season, you kind of like take us, well, at least me personally, I'll take a step back and I look at what I've done and what I can improve on in the second half of the season because you always want to be better in the second half. Like you don't want to ever regress. So um, at that halfway point, of course, I'm going to take a step back and look at what I did, look at what the team has, has accomplished and how can we get better from that point on in this second half, in this second stretch of the season. So that's where I think it counts the most. Has Hassan sent you any design ideas for a golf <laughs> Nah, uh, honestly, we haven't even been talking about that lately. We really just been focused on on, uh, on these games, but I'm sure we'll, we'll we'll talk about that at the end of the season. Were you disappointed that the league did not end up finding Mac Jones? Disappointed? Nah, not really. I ain't paid too much attention to it after uh, this this conference. I mean, after this this what I said. Uh, I didn't really pay too much attention to it, but I mean, it is what it is. At the end of the day, I'm still healthy. I'm still on my two feet, so I'm good. Right, you said like at the halfway point you did that assessment. What from that assessment that you did about at the halfway point that you could share about yourself as far as did well or want to improve on on the second half of the season? Um, with myself personally, yeah. um, I would just say finishing certain plays that uh, I feel like I should finish, and also. Just dealing with certain ways that people not attack me, but try to, uh, I guess, disrupt my, my pass rush or whatever. So dealing with that and just finding ways around it, just I know if this guy, if they're going to do this kind of thing, they're going to put this guy in my way, I got to do this. If they're going to double team me, if they're going to chip me with the back, I got to do this. So just really analyzing what people are doing to me and uh, reacting off of it. Is that something that you do a lot? Sort of think about that part of the game, sort of off the snap, what you're going to do and finishing the play? I can't hear you. Is that something that you do often? Think about the what you're going to do after initial stat in terms of getting to the quarterback and finishing that play. Uh, in a sense, yeah. I mean, at, at, a, at a certain point, you got to let your instincts kick in, but you do want to be aware of of certain guys that may try to slow you down. Like, um, like just for instance, on that that strip sack, Hassan got. I was aware that Ertz was in 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 like my in my lane, and I pretty much knew he was going to chip me, so I decided to chip him first before he got to me. That's kind of just an example of, of guys that try to slow you down. You want to get the beat on them before they can get you. Defensively, the Panthers have one of the best defenses in the league, but you guys seem to still be playing with a chip on your shoulder like you have something to prove. Would you, is that a fair assessment? Or? Uh, it's fair. Um, 
Uh, I would I would definitely say it's still a chip, but but my main thing is not getting complacent. I don't want to I don't want to have a great first half of the season and then we slack off where it really count. Like that'd be that'd just be terrible. You know what I mean? Like we top top five top whatever defense for the first half and then we slack off and, and end up in the middle of the bunch. I just rather us keep this going or keep working and, and keep fine tuning the things that we need to work on. Detroit was part of our Thursday night football pregame show. Last week, we were talking about energy and the energy that Cam brings, how important it is, because Trey was that kind of dude as well. Yeah. How important is it from a guy that's in the locker room? Because we talk about analytics all the time these days. To have a guy that brings energy like Cam does, it's something you can't see on a sheet. But how important is that to a locker room, to a football team? It's very important. And you need, you need those kind of guys. You need those kind of guys around um, to keep everybody in high spirits, to keep everybody motivated, and just to keep the juice overall just up, like the juice level overall up. Like it's just, it's just something that you need because, you know, at times like people can get down on themselves or anything, but you've got guys like Trevo obviously and, and Cam. And there's a, there's a bunch of other guys on the team that, that have a lot of juice that keep the team going. But you know, when guys get down, you need those guys to pick other guys up, so. Brian, we asked this with Cam, one. but kind of pertinent to you too. What did Ron mean in, in your career and kind of bringing you here and drafting? Uh, I mean a lot that uh, he drafted me, took a chance on me, uh, drafted me uh, with the 16th pick. I mean, it mean a lot. But uh, as the season, as my rookie season went, I didn't really have a lot of you know one-on-one -on -one conversations with uh, Coach Rivera or nothing like that. But uh, I know he was always a stand-up guy, always a cool dude. Never, never, I got nothing, nothing bad to say about him. So uh, he's always been a cool guy to me.